Now, listen, you guys, it seems like Doja Cat was out there nailing it at Coachella. And uh, we're also going to be talking about her album sales for Scarlet 2, as well as um, in red uh, turning 26 and the gift that she actually got. We're also going to be talking about Wild well, Tokyo Tony and her district towards Recross. Now, these are some of the things that we are going to be talking about in this video hello tea lovers and welcome to the tea plug i trust you guys are doing well and i trust you are doing great personally i am doing great you guys i am doing extremely amazing and uh without further ado let us dive straight into today's team so first of all you guys we are going to talk about this entire situation with madlamini and coachella and first of all disclaimer before you guys start saying oh why don't you insert the coachella sneak you guys did not see what was happening on twitter like people are getting their accounts deleted just because of a coachella footage so don't be coming in my comment section trying to tell me oh put the receipts you want me to lose my page oh my goodness anyway let's talk about the you know the the coachella performance for those of you that obviously um you know came across it well if you didn't if you do check the neighborhood talk if you check the shade room if you check uh milagros page you will see the performance okay i'm not risking you know losing my page over that entire coachella footage because they're not playing any okay but anyway for those of you who did watch it you guys when i tell you that doja cat performed i am not exaggerating okay but i don't know if i'm safe to say this because a part of me really does feel like i'm probably inviting demons or something because honey you know that the way that this girl has been moving lately i don't know i don't know maybe it's the blackness in me you guys i don't know but like one thing i will play about any and everything else in this entire situation but i will never play with demons so a part of me really is scared to give commentary on this but a part of me really does admit that well um you know the performance was really top notch and the production was extremely amazing you guys she came through she served and left no crumbs if we're gonna be honest now one thing about matlamini is when it comes to actually performing live she knows how to do her thing literally she knows how to do her thing you guys she came out um you know with these entire costumes and you know she was cosplaying as a demon that's the part that i dislike about it but then i cannot totally dismiss her creativity just because of my own personal beliefs so yeah let me know you guys in the comment section did you watch that entire coachella performance i did see some people saying oh my goodness she's not that great oh my goodness it was the most boring coachella and i'm like are you kidding me are we looking at the same situation i was looking at the same stage because in as far as doja kate is concerned in my own opinion i feel like she did um you know deliver okay now speaking about doja kate you guys now i kind of feel bad because i've been wanting to talk about it for quite some time and it was probably going to be the headline of this talk of this um in a video but now imagine me releasing a video that talks about her album sales for scarlet 2 and she's out there trending for coachella because she was actually even trending on twitter you guys for coachella but unfortunately you guys i still have to talk about it because this this was the scheduled video so i really have to talk about it i will give her her tens for her live performances and everything but in as far as scarlet 2 is concerned i want to hear do we have any cootie caters in here no not cootie caters what do, what are they called kittens <laughs> do we have any pussy cats here okay do we have those because if we do have those i have questions for you what happened why did you guys not buy doja cat scarlet album because it only managed to sell less than 500 copies and i'm like how like you guys how literally 449 pure cells i i cannot believe that you guys let down doja cat like this and now i'm just wondering how a next project is going to be because like if your deluxe is actually selling less than 500 who you guys are just so ridiculous if we have any 
I mean, kittens, if we have any kittens, please explain to me why you didn't, you know, support your favorite. And uh, obviously, I do see other people saying that, well, you know, all that sneaky stuff that she did, yeah, does not matter. She still has her own fan base. She still can sell. And I'm like, so what's happening with this? But then on the other hand, you guys, if you know people, especially black people in general, once you start messing with demons, once you start, you know, doing all that dark stuff, a lot of people really, especially in our community, really do not mess with um you know with that so i do feel like maybe it's that entire theme of hers that has you know people blue ticking her and stuff like that because i did see even in the blogs people were like oh she really has a nice performance but we don't mess with her because of that stuff because it's not everyone who is as creative as that it's not everyone whose creativity allows them to tap in those different realms personally I told you, I do not mess with stuff like that. But anyway, uh, moving on. So let me know you guys what you think about this entire situation from the Coachella performance to the Scarlet Cells. What do you think is happening with her, you guys? And at the same time, you guys, she's actually being outdone by um, Cousin Sloth. Literally, Cousin Sloth is out there outdoing, um, you know, obviously Doja Cat. And this has to be a very dark day. In the female rap community, no, I'm just kidding. It's not a dark day, but it's really shocking that uh, Cousin Sloth would outdo, um, you know, Doja Cat in as far as pure cells are concerned, okay? And uh, the next thing that we are going to be talking about, we are also going to be talking about, uh, obviously, uh, Sexy Red. I just want to say happy birthday to her. She has turned... 26 years you guys and honestly speaking it's just it's a blessing to see another year and it seems like Nicki Minaj was also out there wishing her happy birthday this is what she had to say she said happy birthday sexy you really have been out here hustling non-stop whilst being preggers while being the mom of two while being true to yourself while also evolving you make it look easy but we all know it's not all year while putting out bangers hashtag heavy on it okay and and yeah, happy birthday to her. Now, it does seem like she also got a very beautiful gift, an expensive car. And people were cutting up in the comment sections saying that, well, is it Drake who bought you, who bought you and stuff like that. And honestly speaking, you guys like to mess with Drake. I don't think that he's in any position right now to be doing all these internet games with you. That man is busy. He literally has to defend himself from all angles, like literally 360. You know, people are coming for him like that. And I'm really trying to understand where this is coming from. Well, Rick Ross really presented this case and said that, well, it's because, you know, he gave a season desist to French Montana. I get that. But everybody else, okay, Kendrick, we've known that they've had a beef for a very long time. But Future, The Weeknd, um, you know, all these other guys. I'm just like, where is all of this, you know? coming from and did you guys notice how Birdman was quick to say oh i'm riding with you oh i'm this and i'm like bro is this you when you were crickets when the same the very same thing or even worse was actually happening to Nicki Minaj you were nowhere to be found but all of a sudden you know you're coming out the way that Birdman sometimes reacts when it comes to Drake like literally he's out there ready to defend him 10 toes down each and every single time and I'm like but you don't have the same energy for you know some of the protégés that you've had like what's happening but then another person was saying that it does seem like drake really does um you know butter a lot of people's bread okay it seems like he really does you know give out these um you know of money to people to protect him so i guess that's why these people really ride hard for him like that and uh another person who found herself um you know inserted in this entire well self-inserted in this entire situation is none other than black china's mother miss tokyo tony and i promise you tokyo tony in her mind i think she really does think that she's a rapper or something because she was out there coming for recross and i'm like do they have a history together what is this i listened to that you guys and if it doesn't have an instrumental i would try um to basically put it right here well there you had miss tokyo to she really had some words for recross <laughs> so let me know you guys what you think about that personally i just found that pretty hilarious okay now moving on to the next thing that we're going to be talking about you guys we are going to be talking about lil kim
Look, him is being blasted all over the internet because you guys, it is actually being alleged that while well, she is dating a 24 year old and it seems like the internet is not here for it. Like I've been seeing videos of her circulating and some of the things that she's out there saying, I'm just like, is everything okay at home? Like what's happening with you? Okay. It does seem like, I don't know, something is happening around her. Like I'm not going to shame her for wanting to date a 24 year old, but we know that if it were someone that I'm not going to mention by name obviously the tune would be different but because of low kim some people really are choosing to turn a blind eye now i'm just going to insert a part of her you know life that she did and nowadays she's also moving around with glasses okay with sunglasses all the time okay and is out there you know just i want you guys to let me know what is giving um you know in the comment section so i'm just going to insert the entire live and uh thank you very much you guys for watching and thank you very much for making it this far if you haven't already what are you waiting for smash that subscribe button and do turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified each and every time that i post and just a side note to those people who want to say on oh, your accent this oh you're if you're not even african-american why are you talking about this and listen as long as i grew up listening to the same music that you guys grew up listening to and as long as you know there are these people that um you know influenced me growing up literally like you can't tell me anything okay if i'm good enough to buy their music if i'm good enough to support their music if i'm good enough to be influenced by them i'm also good enough to give my two senses about everything that's happening in that industry that so influenced me so please miss me with that nonsense in the comment section all right miss me with that nonsense okay like literally you have mad at me for, oh my goodness, you're not African-American. Oh my goodness, you're not. And I'm just like, you're okay with a whitey woman using the N-word. And here you are policing me over culture. Are you mad? Are you insane? Because it's usually the same people. The same people who let the Transformer get away with using the N-word are the same people who like to come here and, you know, policing me and, you know, you know, you know, gatekeeping this culture. But you let these people that are not even blk you let them use the n-word but you're out here policing me for giving commentary on music that actually impacts me like literally i'm not even playing with you if you come with that nonsense in the comment section until my next one see you <laughs> we are outside milwaukee milwaukee, milwaukee where's you at where's you at we was outside the night. It was crazy. Tweezy party, Adidas private party. I'm, I, honestly, I was out here for an Adidas private party. And me and Tay performed. We performed Love For You. We performed Jump Off. We performed Quiet Song and whatever. Shout out to everybody that made it happen. Mm. Mm. It was cool. I got some really good... <laughs> Things I want to share with y'all, but not right now, because y'all play too much. But it was a really nice Adidas party. You see this? This is Adidas. Let me show you. This shit is fire, bro. Can you see it, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, make sure you can see it, because I can't. I can't. Look. Can right you see it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we seen it. Right? Nah, we seen it. Yeah, for sure. This shit is fire. I'm not going to lie. I like this shit. They kind of like gave me the fire and shit. The most custom made shit we got some really <sighs> secret shit going on <laughs> with adidas adidas look these are my favorite fucking sneakers <laughs> these are my favorite i love these and they're gonna next time you see them it's gonna say little kim queen b in the back <laughs>